Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be here on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East Center Vesta. Thank you very much. I'm Philip M. Aguale. Parallel supercomputing is the most important invention in the history of the computer. The experimental invention of the massively parallel supercomputer that solves many problems at once instead of solving only one problem at a time is one of the computing industry's most hopeful narrative. Parallel supercomputing is an entirely new approach to modern computer science. Without parallel supercomputing, we will only know what might happen. With parallel supercomputing, we know what will happen. For 200 millennia, we strove to make our world a more knowledgeable place. We discovered new fields of study. The field of study that I discovered in the 1970s and 80s is called massively parallel supercomputing. I discovered the supercomputer hopeful's most well-guarded secret, namely practical parallel processing across a new internet. But the heart of supercomputing isn't the fastest calculations. The heart of supercomputing is solving the grand challenge problems of computer science. I have three quote unquote first supercomputers that corresponded to three technologies. The first quote unquote first supercomputer of 1946 was the first that was programmable. The second, quote unquote, first supercomputer of December 1965 was the first supercomputer to be rated at 1 million instructions per second. I began programming that second, quote unquote, first supercomputer on June 20, 1974, in Corvallis, Oregon, United States. The third and most important first supercomputer is the precursor to the modern supercomputer of today that can execute large-scale, excruciatingly detailed computational fluid dynamics codes such as climate models and execute them across millions of tightly coupled commodity of the shell processors. Back in the 1980s, Parallel processing was controversial and was mocked by the community of 25,000 vector supercomputer scientists. Looking back, that widespread rejection of parallel processing gave its street its acceptance in 1989 some street cred. If you invent something that everybody accepted, then you've not invented anything new. None of the 25,000 vector supercomputer scientists or their leader, Seymour Cray, had a deep understanding of practical parallel processing. If they, if they understood how to solve real world problems as opposed to textbook problems, and if they understood how to parallel process 
and how to solve grand challenge problems and how to solve them across an actual ensemble of 64 binary thousand processors, then Seymour Cray would not have mocked, ridiculed, and dismissed parallel processing as a huge waste of everybody's time. Seymour Cray is best remembered for his famous quote that ridiculed parallel processing as the technology that will render his supercomputers obsolete. Seymour Cray taunted aspiring parallel supercomputer scientists by asking them, quote, if you were plowing a field, which would you rather use? Two strong oxen or 1,024 chickens, unquote. This famous quote of Seymour Cray was used to taunt me when I was attempting to solve the toughest problems arising in mathematics and physics and attempting to solve them by parallel processing them across my new internet that was a new global network of 65,536 processors. Back in 1989, it made the news headlines that an African supercomputer wizard in the United States had figured out that 65,536 chickens that were his metaphors for his as many commodity of the shelf processors that were tightly coupled to each other and figured out that those processors can communicate and compute together and do so as one cohesive whole virtual supercomputer and do so to become more powerful than one strong ox that was Seymour Cray's metaphor for the vector supercomputer. I'm Philip Emma Aguale, and I'm the African supercomputer scientist that was in the news back in 1989. I was in the news because I discovered that practical parallel supercomputing will become the vital technology that underpins every supercomputer. The comparison of my contributions during the 1970s and 80s to the collective contributions of the other 25,000 supercomputer scientists is an act that lacks historical context and perspective, namely my discovery of parallel supercomputing and comparing that single person's contribution to the collective contribution of the 1,000 employees of a supercomputer giant that was paid billions of dollars to deliver supercomputers that embodied my new knowledge of parallel supercomputing. I began programming one of the world's fastest supercomputers back on June 20, 1974 at age 19 in Corvallis, Oregon, United States. What is a supercomputer? The fastest supercomputer occupies the space of a soccer field. The fastest supercomputer costs the budget of any of the 40 poorest nations in the world. The supercomputer is like the lighthouse for science. Supercomputing at the fastest recorded speed is like climbing the Mount Everest of science. How fast is a supercomputer compared to a computer? Supercomputing at the speed of one billion trillion calculations per second. It's like if each of the world's 8 billion persons solved 125 billion maths problems per second. If 1 million human supercomputers 
computed at the speed of one calculation per second, they will take 1.5 billion years to complete a calculation that takes only one second on a parallel supercomputer that computed at the speed of 1 trillion billion calculations per second. My contributions to science, namely practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989 and occurred at age 34, should be measured by a different yardstick when comparing them with my cumulative scientific discoveries at age 64 or later at age 94. The reason is that in 30 years or 60 years, I will have doubled or tripled and developed a larger body of discoveries and inventions. Comparing my contributions at ages 34, 64, and 94, it's like comparing the gold medal counts at the Olympic Games of different sized nations, such as Liberia, Nigeria, and the United States. In scientific research, the number of papers published doubles every year, every nine years. My quest was for the discovery of practical parallel process that is the vital technology that changed the way we looked at the supercomputer. Contrary to a widely held misconception, an article is not a contribution to science per se. The 50 million scholarly articles published in year 2010 alone are nothing but distant background noises. The grand challenge problem of mathematics and physics was solved by inventing a new computer science called practical parallel processing. It's impossible to have computer science without first and foremost inventing the computer itself and it's impossible to have a new computer science and have that new field of study without inventing a new supercomputer that must change the way we look at the fastest computers. Prior to 1964, computer practitioners in the United States were not trained as computer scientists. The reason was that back in 1964, the research community had not accumulated enough new knowledge that would have justified the full trade, full time training of a computer scientist. Just like America must be discovered before it can be colonized, the supercomputer must be invented before the computer scientist can be trained. The inventor of a new supercomputer is the inventor of a new degree in the new computer science. The story of Nigeria encapsulates the story of humanity. Since 1958, the economic progress of Nigeria depends on the crude oil and natural gas discovered and recovered. Only about half of the crude oil discovered can be recovered. The recovery of crude oil and natural gas requires a mix of technologies. The parallel supercomputer is the most advanced technology that is used in the petroleum industry and used to discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas that we are buried one mile deep and that spreads around an area the size of a town. The usefulness of the supercomputer is the reason 
one in ten supercomputers are purchased by the petroleum industry. The supercomputer market is $20 billion per year. Worldwide, over 2 billion computers are in use and parallel processing will play a vital role in the development of the computer of tomorrow. Why are the lecture series that I posted on YouTube.com as long as a nice big limousine? My supercomputing lectures are from the frontiers of knowledge in physics, mathematics, and computer science. It took me 60 years, onward of January 1960, to understand how to use the times table that I learned as a five-year-old and do so across a new internet that is a new global network of millions upon millions of commodity off-the-shelf processors that are tightly coupled to each other and that share nothing between each other and to understand how to use that new technology to solve the grand challenge problems arising at the frontiers of knowledge of extreme scale mathematics and computational physics. Parallel processing, the vital technology that I discovered as underpinning every supercomputer took me 60 years to fully understand. Therefore, you cannot understand parallel processing in only 60 minutes and understand how to solve a grand challenge problem that took me 60 years to understand. A best-selling book like Gone with the Wind will detain you for nearly 1,500 pages. The reason my parallel supercomputer lecture series that I posted on YouTube detains you for over 100 hours is that supercomputing is far more complex than any novel and that my lecture on how to parallel process across a new internet is a first-person account of the new knowledge that I accumulated and discovered across six decades. I was asked, what did the discovery of practical parallel processing mean to you? My discovery of that new way of counting called parallel processing gave me a higher platform to stand and give lectures and do so across the African diaspora. In the new information age, 10% of Africans or 140 million young Africans should be in STEM fields. Science and technology are icons of poverty alleviation. Africa must be part of the scientific revolution. The African youth must be at the frontier of scientific knowledge. It is my hope that my lectures posted online and the school reports on Philip M. Aguale will inspire the next generation of physicists, mathematicians, and computer scientists. I'm Philip M. Aguale. I am an explorer of unknown scientific and supercomputer worlds, just like Christopher Columbus was an explorer of unknown lands and oceans. In the 18th century, the interior of Africa was unknown to Europeans, just as the interior of Europe was unknown to Africans. On June 21, 1795, Mongo Park arrived in present-day Gambia, Africa, and arrived to begin his exploration, mapping, and charting of the course 
of the unknown river Niger. It was Mongo, it was hoped that Mongo Park's new map would open the interior of Africa for colonization. That was how British West Africa was born in, in a century and a half after Mongo Park's visit to Africa. My discovery of practical parallel processing is to the modern supercomputer what the map of the river Niger is to ancient Africa. The new knowledge of the river Niger is the reason Mongo Park is the subject of school reports in Nigeria. And the reason Philip M. Agwan is the subject of school reports in the United States. And Philip M. Agwan, since June 20, 1974, I had been exploring the interior of an unknown world that is the frontier of supercomputer knowledge. I'm an African that was born as a British protected child that was born in the British West African colony of Nigeria and that was born in Akure in the heart of Yoruba land on August 23, 1954. Africa must redefine itself through technology. Science is a precondition for moving Africa forward. Scientific knowledge is used to discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas that are buried one mile deep beneath the oil fields in the Niger Delta region of the southeastern part of my country of birth, Nigeria. Technology is used to create industries in Africa, from South Africa to Senegal. Africa's grand challenge of the 21st century will be to alleviate poverty and do so by using birth control to reduce poverty and create wealth. If Africa realizes that science is its primary weapon in its fight against poverty, then its young scientists will become soldiers in the continent's fight against poverty. The science policy of each of the 54 African nations should be communicated across multiple media that includes television, newspapers, banknotes, post-take stamps, Nollywood movies, and even buses. I did not only get the credit for my discovery of practical parallel processing, but I, in part, also received the credit as a Nigerian. I am studying in schools in the United States and studied as an inventor that contributed to the development of the modern supercomputer and studied as a black inventor in particular. A scientific discovery rebounds to the birthplace of its discoverer as well as to his or her adopted nation. Albert Einstein is claimed by Germany his country of birth, claimed by Switzerland, the country he made his discovery, claimed by Israel, his country of ancestry, and claimed by the United States, that was his adopted country. Albert Einstein is claimed by four nations, with each nation trying to assure its priority in the contributions to physics that was credited to Albert Einstein. I am studied in schools as a Nigerian inventor, as an African inventor, as an American inventor, and as an African American inventor. My school market in Nigeria is huge. Back in 2008, Nigeria had 
54,434 public primary schools that enrolled 24,422,918 students. Nigeria had 7,129 junior secondary schools that enrolled 3,266,780 students. In 2012, 1,503,931 Nigerian students took the JAMB examination that is administered by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board. The 17th century was the century of calculus. The 18th century was the century of physics. The 19th century was the century of non-Euclidean geometry. And the 20th century was the century of the computer. I believe that the 21st century will be the century of the planetary-sized supercomputer that will encircle the Earth as a super-intelligent internet. I discovered parallel processing, both theoretically and a priori, and I did so before I discovered the technology experimentally and invented the technology across a new internet that is a new global network of 65,536 processors that we are tightly coupled to each other and that we are identical to each other. I discovered how to massively parallel process across a new internet and how to do so by using the binary reflected naming code to name each of my 64 binary thousand processors that uniformly encircled my new internet and encircled it in the manner a sphere tightly encircled a cube. That was how I discovered a priori how to reduce 64 binary thousand days or 180 years of computing within only one processor to only one day of supercomputing across a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors. At 8.15 in the morning of the 4th of July 1989, I experimentally reconfirmed my theoretical discovery and reconfirmed it as practical parallel processing across a new ensemble of 64 binary thousand tightly coupled processors, each computing at 647,303 calculations per second. I remember that date because it was also celebrated as the U.S. Independence Day. I celebrate that 4th of July, 1989, as the day I became the first person to figure out how to solve grand challenge problems and how to solve such real-world problems at the then world's fastest speed of 3.1 billion calculations per second. My discovery of practical parallel processing made the news headlines because I solved a long-standing enigma in supercomputing. Namely, I upgraded a science fiction story from a lecture that I delivered back in November 1982 to a science fiction story and a, and a science fiction story that was first published back on February 1, 1922. And I upgraded, upgraded that fiction to a non-fiction that entered into modern supercomputer textbooks and that became the vital technology that underpins every supercomputer. My discovery of practical parallel processing made the news headlines back in 1989 and it was later praised 
by then U.S. President Bill Clinton, who revisited that discovery in his televised White House speech of August 26, 2000. President Bill Clinton described my contribution as a formula that enables computers to compute faster. My discovery of practical parallel processing that President Bill Clinton spoke about opened new fields of study, such as extreme scale computational mathematics, science, and engineering. My discovery of practical parallel processing that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989, made the news headlines because it will become a vital technology that will underpin the fastest computations. My invention made the news headlines because computing a million things at once, instead of only one thing at a time, changed our idea of what the supercomputer will become in a decade and what the computer of your great-grandchildren will be like in a century. My search for a new supercomputer was a search for the parallel supercomputer that I discovered on the 4th of July, 1989 and discovered to be a new internet that is a new global network of two raised to power 16 processors that we are married together as one cohesive virtual supercomputer. In 1989, I was in the news headlines because I discovered that parallel processing is the vital technology for all supercomputers and possibly for the computer of tomorrow. I discovered that parallel processing is the vital technology that will enable a supercomputer to use the slowest processors in the world that are configured as a new internet and use them to compute faster than the fastest supercomputer in the world. In my search for that new computer that is faster than any supercomputer, I failed more often than I succeeded. In fact, I failed most of the time. Looking back to the 1980s, an entire decade that I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel supercomputer ever built, and a machinery that was powered by an ensemble of 65,536 processors. I say that the parallel supercomputer was then like heaven and hell that were outside the realms of our existence. Back in the 1980s, 25,000 supercomputer scientists had registered accounts on supercomputers across the United States. I had none. I applied for supercomputer accounts. The accounts were approved, but they were immediately revoked when the administrators discovered that I was black and African. The fastest supercomputer in the world costs more than the annual budget of each of the 40 poorest nations in the world. For that reason, the fastest supercomputer in the world is a very closely guarded technology. In Japan, a non-Japanese is not allowed to browse through the operating manual of the fastest supercomputer in Japan. In China, a non-Chinese is not allowed to browse through the operating manual of the fastest supercomputer in China. In the 1980s, vector supercomputer scientists mocked me and made fun of my discovery of practical parallel processing. Today, parallel processing 
is the vital technology that underpins every supercomputer. And those supercomputer scientists that mocked me and made fun of me are using the new supercomputer they once ridiculed. Back in the 1980s, 25,000 supercomputer scientists were programming vector supercomputers. I took the opposite direction called parallel processing that was then ridiculed as a huge waste of time. That was how I discovered how to parallel process grand challenge problems and how to solve them across a new global network of 65,536 tightly coupled commodity off the shelf processors that outline and define a new internet. That invention made the news headlines in 1989. My parallel processing experiment that I executed across my new internet that was a new global network of 65,536 tightly coupled processors was the first time a scientific discoverer of sub-Saharan African ancestry and that was born in Africa was assured priority by the Western media and credited for discovering practical parallel processing, and for discovering it as the vital technology that will underpin every supercomputer and as the invention that changed the way we think about extreme scale computing, specifically the way we think about the supercomputer. And it was the first time a United States president assured priority and did so in a televised White House speech and did so for an invention of an African-born scientist. It was the first time an African scientific discoverer was included in United States core knowledge series. It was the United States, not Nigeria, that chose to study my invention of the practical parallel supercomputer and study it in its schools. Back in Africa, postage stamps honored white scientists such as Galileo, Isaac Newton, and Albert Einstein that we are not born in Africa. I was the first sub-Saharan African-born inventor to be honored on postage stamps. Back in the 1970s, I was unknown and I wasn't hungry for fame. I wasn't among the first to promote my discovery of practical parallel processing to the wider audience. The Computer Society of the IEEE was the first to champion my discovery of practical parallel processing. The IEEE stands for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. The IEEE is the world's largest technical society. The Computer Society of the IEEE recognized my discovery of practical parallel processing and did so by giving me the highest award in the field of supercomputing. The Computer Society of the IEEE issued a press release that described my discovery and that was released in late 1989. The highest recognition that I received is when young students ran to my son to tell him that they were writing their school reports on his father. The highest recognition that a scientist can get is for a 12-year-old to tell him that he wrote a school report on his contribution to science. Another high recognition is to be called a father of an everyday technology, such as the father of the internet, or to be recognized as the patriarch of a profession, or to be on postage stamps and banknotes, or to receive a Fields 
highest price. Most importantly, for an inventor to be immortalized and studied in schools requires that his or her invention be useful, concrete, and tangible, and be in the living, in the living room or classroom of each student. Parallel processing physically transformed my global network of 65,536 processors to a different state or thing, namely a new supercomputer that is also a new internet. The supercomputers of today are different from the supercomputers of yesteryears and different in the following way. The supercomputers of yesteryears solved only one problem at a time or in sequence. While the supercomputers of today solve millions of problems at once or in parallel. Back in 1989, I was in the news headlines for discovering that the once impossible is in fact possible. Namely, I discovered how to divide the toughest problems arising in physics, calculus, and algebra, and how to chop them into millions of smaller problems that could be solved in a one problem to one processor corresponded manner and solved across as many processors. I was also in the news headlines for discovering how to solve those smaller problems across as many commodity of the shell processors that were identical to each other and that we are equal distances apart from each other, and that share nothing between, between each other. Each of those processors operated its own operating system. Parallel processing, or doing many things at once, is the new supercomputer technology that I discovered on the 4th of July, 1989, that is used to construct the modern supercomputer and the fastest computer and that can be used to construct them from an ensemble of the slowest processors in the world. That discovery of practical parallel processing has rich and fertile consequences and is my signature contribution to the development of the computer as well as the reason Philip M. Aguale is the subject of school reports. The computer is the quintessential human invention. It is the very symbol of genius and inspiration. Inventing the supercomputer is about turning science fiction to non-fiction and doing so during the 67 years on what of February 1, 1922. The 4th of July, 1989, is the date that history decided that the supercomputer that is powered by parallel processing was invented and the date darkness was turned into light. Historically, the most ignored inventors are those that were black and of African ancestry. The most memorable and the most negative thing that happened to me back in the 1980s was that research scientists who did not contribute to my research on parallel supercomputing and who fought against my having access to the vector supercomputer and who sabotaged my research while I was conducting it on parallel processing began to blackmail me and began to demand that they receive credit for contributions to the invention of the parallel supercomputer that they did not make and to be given credit for my discovery of how to solve real-world problems and solve them by parallel processing them across millions of processors that were tightly coupled to each other and that shared nothing between each other with each processor operating its own operating system. They claimed 
to know as much as I did about parallel processing. But yet, none could deliver a public lecture on how they discovered practical parallel processing. That demand for unearned credit was an epiphany because the visible side of scientists taking credit for what they did not invent and could not invent is that they could not give a lecture on their alleged invention or even discuss parallel processing without constantly reading from borrowed notes. Even though there are countless articles and videos of me giving most of the lectures on the subject of parallel supercomputer, some people still wanted me. Some people still wanted to give the credit to white men, such as Seymour Cray and Jean Amla, who did not invent the technology, but instead mocked parallel processing as a huge waste of everybody's time. <coughs> it is on record that both Seymour Cray and Jean Amda fought against the acceptance of the parallel supercomputer. This example of transferring the credit for my invention of practical parallel processing to Seymour Cray that only invented the now obsolete vector supercomputer was an example of the black tax that each black inventor paid to white non-inventors and paid to get any job promotion or scientific recognition. Parallel processing, the vital technology that makes every supercomputer super, was first published as a science fiction story back on February 1, 1922. 67 years later, and at 8.15 in the morning of the 4th of July, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, I upgraded parallel processing from science fiction to non-fiction. I remember that date because it was the U.S. Independence Day. My contribution to the development of the supercomputer is this. I upgraded parallel processing from fiction to non-fiction, and I did so when I parallel processed across a new internet, that is a new global network of 65,536 lowest processors in the world. And I did so when I recorded the world's fastest supercomputer speeds. 67 years earlier, my invention of practical parallel processing that occurred across a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors was published on February 1, 1922, but published as a science fiction story. That science fiction was the story of how 64,000 human computers could be employed to numerically solve the discretized initial boundary value problem of mathematical physics that encodes some laws of physics and that govern the weather above the surface of the earth. What is Philip M. Aguale famous for? I was in the news headlines because I was the first person to discover how to employ a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors and use them to forecast in inverted commas the weather below the surface of the earth. It was for that 1989 contribution to the development of the computer that I won the top prize in the field of supercomputing. My experimental discovery of practical parallel processing was highlighted in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal. Practical parallel processing is the supercomputer invention that I am famous for 
and it's the invention in school reports titled Philip Emmanuel Computer. Being recognized by or being accessible to a potential audience of one million children is rarer than being recognized by one million scientists. It's like the difference between being known in popular culture and many being known amongst computer scientists. Thank you. <laughs> Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.